Oh, hello, I'm back. It's Tim Ostendorf, uh, baritone and innkeeper with all things, we well, usually with all things Joan Sutherland, and I've mixed it up plenty of times. I've got to stop using that tagline because it's not always about Joan Sutherland, although, of course, it always is. Um, and it had been a while since I'd been doing these videos, and I started them up the other day, and here I am back. Uh, I have this new laptop, and I'm trying all new sorts of fun things with it, and uh, it's nice that I didn't have to have a separate camera, which I didn't even know I needed, and all that sort of fun stuff. And I have a lovely cup of Italian roast today. Mm -hmm. um, tasty. Drinking it uh, out of the uh, uh, the Blue Heaven. Uh, you've probably all seen this lovely vintage um, stuff. Uh, China. It's not well. It's not real China. It's the stuff you got for free, or your grandmother probably got for free, or you, for fifty cents, or whatever it was at the A and P. Um, and we have the red um, country cottage one. I forgot what that's called. Like happy memories or memory lane. Memory lane. Hi, ah, there it is. Hmm. But anyway, this one's called Blue Heaven. Mm -hmm. And so um, <clears throat> I thought I would play a little more Christina Dorticum, who passed away recently. And this would be part of the big finale scene from Rossini's Armida. And let's see, it was one of, let's see if I've got all my stuff here, one of Renee Fleming's actually first big hits. This was an early on recording. There's an early picture of Renee, kind of a funky uh, cartoonish picture. Um, and this was back in, boy, what's the date on this? Hey, can I get 1993? So that was uh, a while ago, obviously. Um, and that was one of her first big hits. And it's famous for having like a three million tenors and one soprano. And so so and it's very fantastical. Uh, this was uh, there was a DVD put out of the the Met production, which was very strange and wondrous. And why was it strange and wondrous? Well, if you look at the story, we have Knights of the Crusade. Excuse me. <clears throat> yes, this time has come. Oh, look at that. Uh, Knights of the Crusade, they're out on the battlefield. Armida, she is this, um, you know, sorceress, and she's in league with somebody else, and there's disguises, and they end up in, in hell with a group of demons from the underworld. Um, and then uh, Ronaldo, and he's enthralled with her, and and uh, uh, suddenly uh, there's this pleasure palace that's built, and she sings her very famous D'Amore al Dolce Impero, that uh, lots of um, uh, uh, roulades and hoo -hahs and things like that. I think, I think, whoa, it's, but it's good for the text, but not for the looking out. Whoa, everything was woo um, And I think Callas did a famous recording of that. Anyway, a lot of people record. I have uh, Caballé singing that famous. It's kind of a variation on a theme with lots of... Um, uh, variants and the, and what anyway blah 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 they're these soldiers and uh, Armida reaches the three soldiers Armida reaches the three soldiers before they can sail away she begs Ronaldo not to leave her um, she even offers to go into battle with him they try to restrain her and everything and then love and revenge appear and it's fantastical and crazy and she destroys the pleasure palace and flies away in her age and so it's quite crazy. And the um, some of the text... Oh, this is going to be Christina Dordicum. Um There she is. I love that outfit. It's just so... It's so her. It's so with the hair and the, the wig, obviously, and the uh, costume. And I, I wonder what that was supposed to be for, what role that would have been. Hmm. I don't know. I have to look that up. Um, and so some of the text that she's singing, uh, if you do not give me a sign of grief at my cruel torment, you have never had a spark of pity, a savage. I gotta look some of these words up. Ha. Oh, where are the, uh, can't find the glasses now. Now I lost the glasses. I'm all a mess. Oh, here they are. Hmm. Um, oh, much better. Um, well, I still need to look up this word. A savage Harkanian tiger gave birth to you, and your soul was always nurtured on cruelty. And she goes on, and ah, give me at least death, make an end of my suffering. But the real reason, of course, is to listen to a little Christina Deutichum. Oh, so anyway, did I give you my intro? If you haven't heard me, uh, for the uh, many, many of you uh, that have found this crazy video out on the webses and the YouTube's nots, you YouTube's nots, YouTube's as I don't even know what I was trying to say with that one. 
Oh, and by the way, um, my pocket is a little too low on my vest, but I loved how this pocket square sort of coordinated with the three different types of kind of a little window pane -y pattern here. Um, so yeah, I'm going for the whole Will Schuster with the vest, and it's my whole new look with the vest and the pocket square and a little, uh, a couple little bracelets and a little whatever. I'm creating my whole new something. I don't know. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, boy, I think I've had too much coffee, and I didn't even have my kickstart today. I had my coffee instead. Lots of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, boy, I was going way there somewhere. I guess it doesn't matter. So, um, Christina Doidicum, she has this very, uh, unorthodox way of doing her coloratura, um, a very black a black a black a black a black clockatura, some people call it, or the gurgle, blah, 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 that sort of thing, and so you really get to hear it in this particular thing, because the, it, the coloratura is not too fast in this section, and so you really can hear her articulating, uh, each and every little note. I don't, I don't know how she did it, or what her reason behind, anyway, let's get to some music, um, all right, all right, here we go. so bizarrely, strangely wonderful about it. It's just so crazy and I, I really wonder what it must have she must have been doing like a glottal stop on each and oh I, I don't even know what she's doing I can't even wrap my head around what how she was making those sounds <laughs> and um, what is great about her voice I think and my friend John Carroll out in Seattle hello John who is a uh, favorite soprano is Beverly Sills mine being Joan Sutherland of course with a side note about all about Adita Gruberova is, and I, I think I probably pissed him off one time because I compared Sills and Joy to come because sometimes I hear, uh, definitely not in the coloratura, but sometimes there's a, a sound or a little shimmer or something um, uh, that I, f I hear a little similarity in their sound. I'm um, definitely not the way that this this crazy lady does a coloratura. And so, but what's interesting is she obviously had a much bigger voice than Sills. Not that that's a bad thing. That is not a negative. It's just that the voice itself was obviously larger. And so she could do some of these bigger roles and even though this requires a lot of coloratura it it i think really you need i mean she's this crazy sorceress right and and she flies off in a rage and she's destroying that now of course renee fleming doesn't have really a huge voice um and i find um she, her uh, performance is a little um definitely different it's not as crazy it's more of um um I don't, i've never really done a a true analysis, uh, not that any of this is true analysis, just me babbling on, uh, but uh, of her performance. But um, anyway, interesting, Christina Doherty comes. She's one of the few that could do roles like this and sing things like she also did Turandot, which, of, of course, someone like Joan Sutherland recorded it, but she never did it on stage, whereas Christina Doherty come did sing it on stage. She also did, what's that famous, is it Odabella um, um, from... Um, Oh, uh, um, uh, anyway, one of those Verity ones and one of the, those other Verity uh, voice, quote unquote, voice wreckers. Anyway, she did those big roles, too. And so I may play some of those at some point. But anyway, back to a little more Rossini. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Uh, and she had a pretty uh, low, a pretty rich, I should say, pretty rich low register, um, which I love, which is much needed for this too. And and I, just those slow runs. I don't know. It's just. I, I just I do love the idea that she was in the recording studio with her finger in the mouth, but I don't think that's how she did it. She has again. Oh, and that's one of the many tenors comes in and he sent something, I don't know. I love that, that orchestration. <laughs> And that, that syncopated with the sigh. She's like, she's, she's getting tired. Oh, oh. Love that. So anyway, um, that's really the part that I wanted to play, that slower section. And then it does go on, and this whole thing goes on for another, uh, I don't know, eight minutes or something. And we're not going to do that whole thing, or maybe I'll do it in another video, uh, because I think she ends on a spectacular high E flat at the end. Um, so anyway, that's just a, a little bit to show off her uh, crazy... Um, uh, coloratura technique, for lack of a better term, which I've used multiple times already in this video. Um, but I, I still, if any of you Jordi Comians out there know how she did that, um, any of you Dutchified coloratura fanny foes, um, know what... <laughs> I might have to use that again. That that was good. Um, know how she did that? I don't know. So anyway, Tim Ostendorf here um, at uh, from the Inner Crystal Lake, um, where we do monthly opera dinners, and we have and we do uh, we do you know, kind of alternate operas and uh, musicals. And so this uh, coming uh, in a little while, um, we're going to be doing uh, Stephen Sondheim's Company, um, and that's coming up. Um, uh, well, anyway, it, it's coming up in October, October twenty third, I think. It's a Thursday night. Um, check your calendar. Um, and. And uh, that's, this is the year 2014, by the way, in case this stays out there for eons and eons. And you're like, well, I was looking for company at the Inn at Crystal Lake by Stephen Sondheim. And it already happened like 10 years ago. Uh, like, this is really going to be around in 10 years. It'll probably fizzle off into the ether and never be seen again. Okay, say, say goodbye, Monty. Monty. Hey, Monty. There you go. I always got to get a little Monty in there. I think that's my new thing with the... My <laughs> it's like, whatever. Whatever, really, dude. All right, signing off for now. Tim Olsen, Rolf Baritone, and Innkeeper, and uh, and maybe we'll have a little Joan Sutherland next time. But Joan never sang Automita. That would have been wonderful, wouldn't have? Hmm. Hmm.